Matthew chapter 4, 19. I'm going to read 19. As a congregation, we're going to read verse 20. And verse 19 says this. And he said to them, Jesus said to them, follow me as my disciples, accept in me as your master and teacher, and walk in the same path of life that I walk. And I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20. Go ahead. Wow, that's powerful. I want you to read it one more time. That was sounded so good. I, more time. Read verse 20 again. Let's give the Lord a hand. Great job, congregation. Let's have a seat. Isn't it beautiful to hear the word of God in your own mouth? There's nothing more powerful than you speaking it. It's more powerful than me speaking it. That's great. And today we're going to be talking about a simple subject, which, but it's a profound subject. It's the most important subject in the world. How do we follow Jesus? So if I ask someone, are you following Jesus? There's a lot of people that say, yes, I am. But we're going to learn what it means to follow Jesus. Jesus said, follow me as my disciples. Their response to that just simple question I don't think it was a long speech. I think it was a statement. Follow me as my disciple. And the scripture says that they immediately left their nets and followed him as his disciples. So how do we follow Jesus? I'm going to give you th three ways to follow Jesus. One is immediately. You'll never be a follower of Jesus until you finally say, right now, I'm making a decision to follow Jesus. Immediately, they left their nets. We need to be careful that when we hear a call of God, that we don't hesitate or do this, put it off, or develop a habit of talking ourselves out of doing immediately what he asks us to do. We need to obey immediately. We need to forgive immediately. Why forgive immediately? God tells us, Jesus tells us, uh, he says, uh, pray like this, forgive those who trespass against you. But he goes on to say, if you don't forgive them, their trespasses, God is saying, I won't forgive you your trespasses. And this is what happens when we don't immediately act on, let's say uh, a, a, a command like that, forgive. It's, it's easy for that to develop into a stronghold, it gets harder to forgive them the longer it takes. It, it's kind of like this. It's you're, in, you're next to a pool. The water's a little cold. You dip your feet into it, and then you dip your feet into it. You don't jump in. And the more you think about it, the less likely you're going to be able to jump in. Right? And there's somebody else that's just coming out of the house and just ru runs in, dives in the water, and they're enjoying it while you're sitting there contemplating. It's too cold. I remember when me and my brother, we, when bungee jumping was in. How many remember when bungee jumping was in? They even had bungee jumping at a Fiesta Village. So everybody, like, was doing it. And, but bungee jumping is just, you go, like, 100 feet up in the air. They tie a, a rubber band on you. And you jump. Now, if you've never done it, me, I'm scared of heights. I'm really scared of heights. So when I stood up there, I was like, I'm, sta I'm standing up there. Robert's probably around, I would say, um, like 13. And I'm 23 or something like that. So I tell Robert, why don't you go first? <laughs> just in case that bungee don't work. I'm just <laughs> I was supposed to protect him, but I, wasn't, I was just thinking about my own life at that point. So Robert goes up there, and he jumps. And he made it look too easy. So I'm next. And I'm just hoping there's an earthquake. <laughs> Something happens. But I stood at their edge, and literally they tied that bungee thing around me. And my feet were like in cement. Like, I was, I was telling myself, jump. <laughs> and my feet were not cooperating. 
And the longer I waited, the harder it was. The cement was getting deeper. I finally did jump off, but it was very difficult. And for some of you, it's kind of that approach that you're having with God. It's God is saying, follow me as my disciple. And if you don't watch it, you could harden your heart towards God. Keep putting it off. And the more you put it off, the harder it will be to take the jump, to make the decision. There's a scripture that says don't harden your heart. We need to be careful that we don't harden our hearts towards Jesus, offer to follow him. In Hebrews 3.15, it says this. Remember what it says. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. All it's saying is today is the day to be saved. Now is the time to follow. The longer we wait, the harder it will be because our hearts will become harder and more rebellious. Instead of developing a habit of immediately following Jesus and developing his character, we'll develop a habit of putting it off and justifying it. Today is the day to join the growth track. Today's the day to sign up maybe for a ministry and, and sign up for maybe one day LA. Today's the day to join a, a P12 growth group or start a new schedule of reading the word on a daily basis. Or maybe you're at home today and God is saying, why don't you come back and fellowship in the church? Today's the day to take that step. Come back to church. So following Jesus is a now thing. It's never a later thing. It can never have happen later. Today's the day of action. Faith is now. But what do we need to immediate? What do we do? We do, do oh, I'm stuttering. <laughs> what do we do? What do we immediately need to leave to follow Jesus? That was a tongue twister right there. Now, what do we need to immediately leave to follow Jesus? Because the Bible says this is what they did. They left their nets. And this is the question. What are your nets that you need to leave to follow Jesus? What is the thing that would hold you back? Now, when they left their nets, it was a big deal for them because these men were career fishermen. And the level of following that Jesus was asking them to follow was he saying, follow me. And what he was going to do is I'm going to make you a scholar a rabbi, I'm going to teach you how to be just like me, and it's going to take your full attention. Now, Jesus is not asking you to leave your job and leave your family, but what he's saying, the call and the intense is saying, be willing to give up everything and anything that would get in the way of you following Jesus with all your heart. The scripture says this, so how do we follow Jesus immediately? What do we need to leave? We leave everything. And Luke 14, says this. It is the same for, for each of you. It is the same for each of you. You must leave everything you have to follow me. If not, you cannot be my follower. Just think about this. You got to leave everything. Well, you know, Susie is a prime example. She has made a decision to invest in our children in this church. But she made that decision when she was a little girl. I'm going to follow Jesus and I give everything to the Lord. And what Susie has done, she's given up, she's given her house to the Lord. She's willing to say, God, my house is no longer my house. My house is your house. And I remember just a few years ago, she had a home that she couldn't do this party and invite all the kids over. And she had a bigger home that she bought, that she presently has. And she sold that present home that she had to buy a little bit of smaller house with a way bigger yard. And she did that because when she gave her life to Jesus, she gave everything up. And she was saying, my life is no longer mine. My home is no longer mine. My car is no longer mine. My money is no longer mine. My children are no longer mine. My gifts and talents are no longer mine. I give them to you. So now this is her yard before the kids come. This is her yard after the kids show up. Look at that. Given her home. Everything up for the Lord. 
as she did this, some of you, I'm going to say, you could give up your car for the Lord. What that means, you used to use your car just to go to the casino, the bars, the parties, the amusement parks. You used to use your car just to go to dinner. But God is saying, give me your car. And you know what that means? Is that when you come, you're starting to think, maybe I have three extra seats that aren't taken every Sunday. Maybe I could find three or four people and invite them to church and I'll give them a ride. I'm giving my car to the Lord. I'm going to get that. Give everything to the Lord. I'm going to give you some examples of what we might have to leave to follow Jesus. It could be clothes. You see someone that's in need of clothes. You don't have to, this is what you, you, don't, you don't have to send them always to our downtown campus. Maybe you need to go to your own closet and pick stuff you like and give it to them. Oh, Lord, not my favorite shoes. You know, why don't you go into your closet while, while someone is, is needs clothes and if God puts it on your heart and you find someone needs clothes and ask God, what should I give them? It might be a little scary because he might ask you to give your favorite pants, your favorite shirt. He might. But I know this, if you do give it up, God's going to give you something way better than that. Don't, don't be scared. Just go ahead. Give them clothes. Give them food. Food. We've been doing that all over, all over San Bernardino, and people are hungry. We give them food. Some of us need to give up our religion to follow Jesus. That means you can't follow Jesus because you're too religious. So if I ask you, are you following Jesus? You start mentioning your denomination. You start mentioning the church you were at. And I, I didn't ask you what church you attended. I didn't ask you what religion you belong to. I'm asking you, are you following Jesus? Don't let religion get in the way of following Jesus. Well, I'm a Catholic or I'm a Mormon or I'm a, you know, I, I go to Calvary Chapel or I go to the way. Forget all that first. Why don't you, under, this is a question. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Become a follower of Jesus. Get rid of religion to follow Jesus Christ. It could also be sexual immorality. You cannot follow Jesus and remain sexually immoral. So you might have to give up your sexual morality to follow Jesus. What's sexual morality? All sex outside of the union of a man and a woman in marriage. So you cannot follow Jesus and be a Californicator. <laughs> what by that is, is that you're trying to be a Christian player. You got all kinds of digits on your phone. You even have an old beeper just so they beep you. <laughs> but yet now you've added ministry. That means now you're singing, and this is crazy, now you're preaching. And God says, you could preach all day long, you could sing all day long, but I asked you to be my follower. Follow me as my disciples. So you could do all that, but still the truth is, you are not following me. So you have to unfollow yourself. And unfollow sexual morality, unfollow the, your possessions to follow Jesus Christ. And if you do, whoever's willing to lose it all will definitely gain it all. You're not going to lose nothing. You're actually going to gain peace, joy, and purpose. So we follow Jesus immediately. Someone say, immediately. Now's the time to follow Jesus. Now's the time to develop a habit when God says it, I do it. I remember, you know, every, just so you know how I approach, I approach this. When, and when I am, when I am following, uh, when I am being mentored in any, any area that I need a lot of help in, I don't know what to do, I'm struggling in, I'll look for a mentor. I am teachable. I want to learn. I want to grow. And I don't, I don't want to try to learn everything on my own. If there's people that already know how to do it, teach me how to do it. It could be in your job. It could be in church. It could be in ministry. You could be a pastor of a church and, and your congregation has been 50 people for the last 15 years. And you're thinking, I, I want to grow. How do I do that? Maybe what you need is just a mentor in your life. And if you were willing to learn, you could break out of the, the cycle you're in and get a breakthrough in your life. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's at work. You don't know how to do, you're in sales and and you really don't know how to like, man, it just seems like I can't close a deal. Find someone to mentor you. But what I'm talking about here, most of all, it's spiritual life. 
if someone has a great marriage, there's nothing wrong for you to admit, my marriage is not great, but I'm looking at your marriage. Your marriage seems like it's like on fire. Like, can, is there any way you could mentor me so I could have some health in my relationships? So any area that you want to grow in, you need a mentor in. I'll say it again. Any area you want to grow in, you need a what? So I always tell my mentors, I'll say this, you're not wasting time with me. I go, because I'm, first of all, I show up with questions. I'll show up with a notebook and I'll write down every single thing they're telling me. And the reason I write it down, because I tell them this, you're not wasting time with me. As soon as you teach me a principle for success, I am going to immediately apply it as soon as I leave your office. Are there anyone, anybody here that's an immediate follower of Jesus Christ? When God says that we what? Do it. When God says that we? So we follow Jesus immediately. Second way we follow Jesus is as disciples. In John 1, 43, it says this. The next day Jesus decided to go into Galilee and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me as my disciple, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walk in the same path of life that I walked. I'm going to make a statement. The only way to follow Jesus is as a disciple. There's no other way to follow Jesus but as, as a disciple. You cannot follow Jesus as a fanboy, fangirl. Like, I really like Jesus, he's awesome. I really relate to him. Me and Jesus are tight. That's fine. But Jesus did not say follow him as a believer either because the devil believes that Jesus exists. So believing in Jesus and believing he exists is not enough. The only way to follow Jesus is as a disciple. He said, follow me as my disciple. So if that's the case, I need to know what a disciple is. And this is what it is. It's a learner. Say with me, a learner. So you come to church, you come to a Bible study to learn. So we should be able to ask you by the end of this service, what did you learn? So many people experience a feeling, but they didn't learn nothing. So they come to church for a feeling. They don't come to church for a learning experience. So as disciples, we come to learn. I would even advise this. Come to church and take notes. Because this is what happens. If you don't watch it, you'll hear it. And you remember the feeling. Like, that was good. Like, that was truth. Man, I, that was good. What did you learn? I don't know, but that pastor, he was funny, man. Right? And that, that's good. I, I'm glad you had a great feeling. But you got to learn this stuff because life is a skill. Life is not going to become easier. Relationships are going to become easier. Resistance and warfare is not going to become easier. You have to learn how to fight. You're going to have to learn how to love. You have to learn how to forgive. You have to learn how to follow Jesus. Someone say, I'm a disciple. I'm a learner. It also means a mentee. Someone's mentoring me. It also describes one who has made a decision. Say with it, made a decision to follow Christ in thought, habits, and character. And what a, what a disciple is saying, my goal is to be like Jesus. And many of us have been mentored by other people. And how do we know you're being mentored by them? You're starting to talk like them. You're starting to look like them. You're starting to have the character that they have. We know who you're following because you begin to resemble the people you're following. I told you guys this. There was a season in my life that I was a surfer, and I never surfed in my life. But back in the day, these have a few categories. These have the surfers, the cholos, and the stoners, and then the punk rockers, and then the goth people which were kind of with the punk rockers. So I had to make a decision. Back in those days, you used to go, to go to the store and buy Vans and get OP shirts, Ocean Pacific. 
I never surfed in my life, so I got a little skateboard. And they asked me, what category are you in? I go, I'm a surfer. But then I got tired of that because I moved to a different neighborhood and there was no surfers in that neighborhood. There was cholos in the neighborhood. So I got through a season. I was a cholo gangster. Never joined a gang, never got in a gang fight, nothing like that. But I went to the swap meet, got myself some pleated pants that were oversized. <laughs> I got me some chanclas from Thrifties. I got my little bandana, I got my little belt with my, my initial G Gar for Garcia y que vato. <laughs> and I was a gangster and I was a cholo for just around a month <laughs> until somebody asked me where I was from and I didn't know. <laughs> I'm out of here, I'm gonna fight. I don't even know where I'm from, I'm gonna fight for this. But the idea is I was looking up to these guys and I began to take on their persona, their habits, their character, their talk, their speech. And you have to ask yourself, who are you talking like? Who are you walking like? And we know this, if you're cussing and, and you're always angry and you're always upset, I know this, you're not following Jesus because that's not Jesus' character. If you're unforgiving, you're not following Jesus because Jesus' core of his being is mercy, grace, and forgiveness. We know that, right? So, so the idea is I'm following Jesus to be like Jesus. And to, to be like Jesus, you do need this. You do need a mentor. Mo, I want you to get this. Joshua had a mentor. It was Moses. Elisha had a mentor. It was Elijah. So God, it's, God I mean, Joshua had a mentor and it was Moses. And, and God gives mentors for us so we can grow, so they could pass on what they've learned, their experience, so could, they could also hold us accountable. How many need some accountability in your life? Like, we all need it. Like, we make commitments, but the other day I made a commitment that I'm not going to drink any more soda. Really bad commitment for me. But I told my family. As soon as I told my family, they started holding me accountable. My daughter, Amarisa, some of you guys know Amarisa. She goes, Dad, I don't think so. <laughs> so I started reaching behind her, trying to get this Coke, and then she gave me something that's not a Coke, something a little more healthier. She goes, Dad, you could just have this. You know what? I need accountability, and so do you. That means if I'm going to commit to follow Jesus, why don't you have someone that you meet with on a weekly basis that makes sure you're following Jesus? It's a good thing. How many know we need accountability? I remember when, um, when Lisa gave her life to the Lord and, and um, she came. This is how Lisa came. Lisa came from a home that they never went to church. So she never went to church. She was like 20, 20 years old when she finally came to the Lord. She came to a little Bible study in the home. Lisa uh, was adopted when she was a baby. She's never met her actual mom or for a birth mom or birth dad. When I met Lisa, um, her mom was a wino. I mean, really bad. I never saw Lisa's mom ever not just completely drunk out of her mind. She sat in a chair and she drank herself literally to death. I never had a normal conversation with her mom. I'd come in and she'd be sitting there. It could have been eight o'clock in the morning, and she'd be there with her wine already drunk. Her mom never said anything good to Lisa. It was always putting her down, making her feel she was going to amount to nothing. Once in a while, she'd kick Lisa out as a teenager, take all her clothes and put it on the, on the front lawn and put the sprinklers on. Lisa ended up not knowing her own value, and she was raped over and over by different people had an abortion, feeling like she's worth nothing. She comes into a little Bible study, my mom's teaching, and she's asked, follow Jesus, follow me. I can heal you. I can help you. I know you. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. I got this wonderful life for you. Just follow me. And that day, G Lisa immediately Follow Jesus. 
But this is what she did too. She allowed herself to be mentored. And how I really got to know G Lisa is that she would call my mother every single day and ask her questions. And then she found out that this way she found out that to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to study the Bible. And that was a problem for Lisa. And I'll tell you why it was a problem for Lisa. Because Lisa, up to that day, had never read a book from cover to cover her whole life. And she was thinking, if I need to read the Bible, I'm in trouble because I don't like to read, period. But she didn't look at it as an option. She said, if I need to read the Bible, then I need some help. And she prayed, God, give me the desire to read your Bible and understand it. And she made that prayer, and then this is what she did. She didn't wait to feel it. She just opened up the book, the Bible, in the book of Genesis, which is the book, first book. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, and she started reading the Bible from cover to cover. That year, she read through the whole Bible. By the end of that year, I used to ask Lisa, I go, where's that scripture? And she would say, that's in John chapter 15, verse 7. And I'll look at her, how do you know that? She goes, I've been reading my word. So be, become a disciple of Jesus Christ means to become a student that has a goal to become a scholar. Someone say to become a what? A scholar is one who has profound knowledge in a particular subject. If you become a scholar in the Word of God, young people, I'm going to say this, you're going to have wisdom beyond your years. People are going to say, well, how do you know that? You're going to have grown adults that are married asking for you for counseling. Because wisdom and age not necessarily have to coincide. If you gain the wisdom, you become a scholar in the Word of God, you could have wisdom beyond your years. When you gain wisdom, this is what also is going to happen. You're not going to make the mistakes of those that don't have wisdom. You're going to make decisions that are a lot clearer. And when you start making decisions a lot clearer and you're making the right decisions, you're going to start succeeding. And when you start succeeding, this is what happens. People start looking at you as a leader. And when they start looking at you as a leader, you become a source of wisdom. You become a source of breakthrough. You become a source of love. You can become a source of healing. You become a source of God's power. Because when you're filled with the word of God, you're filled with God. And how do we know that you're, getting, you're becoming a scholar in the word? Do you start speaking like this? The Bible says. The Bible says. The Bible says, the Bible says. So people start coming to you with opinion, and want your opinion. And what you do is say, the Bible says, the Word of God says. Let me show you what God's Word says. I know you want my opinion, but my opinion matters. It doesn't matter. I lived my life according to my opinion, and I was ruining everything until I found out the truth. Now I'm going to give you some truth so you can bank on this, depend on it. It's a promise of God. The Word of God works. Say it with me, the word works. Okay, so I want to become a scholar. Say it with me, a what? So what are the habits of a disciple that wants to become a scholar? Number one, they daily study God's word. How do they study? Daily. How many times do you eat a day, guys? Some of you guys eat three, four, five, ten. If you see food, you eat it. Okay. Some might eat one time a day, but the idea is, there, there's not a day that you don't eat unless you're intentioning to fast or something like that. But even when you intention to fast, your body speaks to you and sometimes you'll eat anyways by accident because you're so used to eating. Now, if you're going to feed your body like that, why wouldn't you feed your spirit like that? Why not get some spiritual nutrition with your Taco Bell? Some of you guys are so rich. You have chefs all over the place. You don't even cook anymore. You got the Del Taco chef, in and out chef, <laughs> right? Baker chef, I just tell my chef what I want and they cook it right there within five minutes. And if they don't do it in five minutes, I just fire them, right? And the idea is you treat yourself so well and you should, but be careful that you're not investing so much in your physical 
appetites that you're not developing a spiritual appetite. So the habit of a, a habit, I'll say, get a Bible and start reading. And say, what's going what's to happen in the first chapter I read? You're going to find out how everything was created. And anyone can understand it. The next chapter, you're going to see how God gave Adam and Eve some instructions, simple instructions, and they didn't do it. They weren't disciples. And then you're going to find out how it affected their kids. The next chapter, Adam's son sons, one of the sons kills the brother. First murder in the Bible is right there in the beginning. So these are stories that you're going to read. And as you read them, this is what's going to happen when you come to church. You're going to be so inspired because we're going to be referencing things that you heard. And that means you're going to get more out of, the, out of this meeting because you're already going to have some exposure to it before you show up. And you can start thinking, man, I heard that before. Oh my gosh, I know the word. Right? So spend time in the Word daily. Let's read these real quick. Habits of a disciple or a future scholar. Immediate obedience to the Word of God. He says it, I do it. Say it with me. He says it, I. Number three, start and complete growth track. Here we have a growth track. We have a method for you to grow, a process. And it starts with this, starting at the way, four classes. By the time you're done with starting at the way, you'll know how to lead someone to the Lord. By the time you're done with starting it the way, you'll be baptized if you've not been baptized. You're going to understand what a disciple is, and you'll be signed up for a ministry and even a power 12. Second set of classes, prospering at the way. Say it with me, prospering at the way. And then freedom at the way. And that's our foundation of growth track, those three classes. If you want to go on our leadership growth track, you could go to leadership at the way and then leadership university. We give you an opportunity here at the Way Rural Outreach to become a scholar. You could get a degree here at the Way Rural Outreach in Christian leadership. Isn't that great that you could go all through the process? And as far as you want to grow, you can grow. And you say, but I can't take these classes. I'm so busy. You can take them. You got to make time for it. And we even have an opportunity for you to do these classes online. So if you can't be here, do it online. Get through the classes. Grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And now another, the, other, the other habit, number four, has, is have a mentor. You have a mentor and meet with them on a regular basis. And you could have a through a P12 group leader, growth group, a ministry leader, and you meet weekly. And number five, weekly church attendance. Say it with me, weekly church attendance. Now, this is important because this is going to prepare you for the third, the third way we follow Jesus. And the third way we follow Jesus is as disciple makers. Say it with me. I make disciples. So what's the fruit of a disciple? It's another disciple. How do we know that we're following Jesus? Eventually, people around you start to train people to follow Jesus. Now, we need to get this in our personal families because this is a big deal. Unless you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you cannot produce children that are disciples of Jesus Christ. They need to see you reading the Bible at home, not just here at church. You guys understand that, right? They need to see that you, your life is adjusting according to the teachings. They need to see, hey, we covered about being a disciple, and dad, you've made some, you've made some decisions. You're now getting your Bible, and you're starting to highlight it. You're starting to take notes at church. That's awesome. So we're going to pass on not just our beliefs. We're going to pass on our values. And the values are the things that we do. I understand. Our values are the things that we what? Do. So we're disciples. We follow Jesus. And the last, the last way we follow Jesus, we follow Jesus as a disciple maker. And... In the call of follow Jesus comes a mission of bringing others to Jesus. Look what he said in Matthew 4, 19. Let's read it again. Jesus said to them, come follow me and I will make you a different kind of fisherman. You will bring in people, not fish. What he's saying is when you follow Jesus as a disciple, the next step is you're going to bring people to Jesus. I remember when I was a young man, as my mom was discipling me, because my father wasn't living for God. My, my birth father died in a gunfight when I was six years old, five, six years old. So he, he was out of my life. Then my mother married my, my father and my stepfather. And, and 
And he, was, he didn't start serving God till like recently, really living for God. So there was no leadership in our home spiritually. There wasn't a man there teaching us the word of God. But my mother said, I'm just going to teach him the word of God. So we did every single Thursday, she was making a disciple. I was her disciple. She would have a Bible study in our home every single Thursday. There wasn't a time in our lives that we didn't have a home Bible study. We took the word from here and we taught it at home. And she would tell me, Marco, we're not going to have a Bible study just ourselves. I want you to go invite your friends. So if we had a Bible study at 7 o'clock, she would tell me to go hit the streets of, of Fontana. And she would send me to the worst neighborhood there was and just go there, invite them, and bring them to the Bible study. So I would go to our hood, and I would wait right around 6 or so because, because most of the gangsters don't come out until night. They're like vampires. And they would come out, and when they came out, they would start partying. Maybe the night before, they had a big party, and I would be walking the streets, and I would break up their party and turn, tell them to turn down the music. And say, hey, guys, I would just say something simple like this. God has a purpose for your life. God loves you. And it doesn't matter what you've done, he'll forgive you. Jesus knocking on your heart's door. And all you need to do is open up your heart and he will save you. He will set you free and give you the life that you've been looking for. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. Give your life to Jesus. And they would look at me like, he's crazy. And they gave me a nickname, Preacher Boy. So when they saw me come, he goes, preacher boy. And I was all by myself. I wasn't sent out with anybody, by myself on those streets. And when I was done, none of them would say, I want to follow Jesus. But they would do this. After I was done, one or two of them would always secretly pull me to the side and say, bro, man, can you pray for me? I'm going through this. And right now, the adopt the block leader at our at our Pomona campus, Javier was in, was in that gang. He was on those streets. And I invited Javier to come to the Lord. He finally surrendered his life years later. He called me when I was in a car business. He goes, I'm strung out on drugs. I can't overcome these drugs. I need some help. And we brought him into a home. He went into a home. He got set free. His life is back on track. He's out there now on the streets of Pomona bringing other gangsters to Jesus Christ. We're talking about spreading this thing. Let's get it to the next generation. So this is simple. How do we follow Jesus? Immediately. How do we follow Jesus? As a disciple. And so I'm going to ask you this question. Who's mentoring you? And it's a really good question because we're going to, today, even by the end of the service, you might ask, someone might come up to you and say, hey, would you like to be part of my growth group? We meet once a week on Thursday nights. I'd love for you to be part of our group. I really believe you'll fit right in and, and we need you and you need us and we'll do life and ministry together. We'll grow together. And you got an opportunity at that point to say, yes, I'm in, or no, not right now. And if you do that, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be pushing off a great opportunity. You were created to be in fellowship. That means you were created to be in a community. Be careful that when you're asked to be part of a group, you don't shine it on because you're scared to get close to people. Maybe you got hurt before and said, I don't want to get real close because when I get close, people burn me. But don't let that fear stop you from getting in a group. Join a group. Be part of it. We need each other. And the same fears you have, how many know they have? But we're going to overcome together. I pray that you become a disciple and become a disciple maker. We'll leave it at this. Jesus gives every believer the same mission. Make disciples. In Matthew 28, 19, he says, go therefore and make disciples. I'm going to read, have you read verse 20. We're going to do that again. I'm going to read verse 19. You're going to read verse 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Look at this. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Baptize in them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them. Oh, no, you guys read verse 20. You guys read verse 20. Go ahead.
Wow. Let's read it one more time. It, it just sounds so good. I just love it. One, one more time. Let's read it again. Wow. So what is the answer? He goes, I've taught you. You teach them. And teach them everything that I've taught you. But don't just teach them to know. Teach them to do, observe, and obey everything that I've taught and commanded you. So we, what God is saying, if we do this, he'll be with us perpetually. He'll never leave us. We're going to see him in every circumstance. You know what that means? When we're about his business, you can't fail because God is with you. And you're going to find your greatest peace, your greatest joy. You're going to find purpose in reaching out to others. Me and my family now, I mean, since then, every Tuesday for the last, I would say, 20, 30 years, I've had a Bible study every single week with a group of people surrounding me. And you know what I'm doing? Making disciples of Jesus Christ. If you want to be alive, breathe. Receive and then give. Receive and what? Receive and? And don't ever think that you can't do it. You can do it. This outline, this whole teaching is on the app. Just download the app and you can pass on the teaching. Just repeat it. Share it with somebody. This is what's going to happen. If you do, you're going to be more alive than you ever have been. Let's give the Lord a hand. He's a good God. Let's all stand up. We're going to dismiss just a second. So how do we follow Jesus? Number one, immediately. How do we follow Jesus? What? Second way we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus as a what? And we follow Jesus as a what? Disciple maker. Okay. So I'm going to dismiss in just a second. Before we leave. I'm going to give an opportunity like Jesus gave his disciples. Follow me as my disciples. And if you do that and you accept that call, you're going to be accepting the greatest call in your life. Because in that call is your breakthrough. In that call is your purpose. In that call is your freedom. In that call is joy. In that call, there's victory. In that call, there's eternal life. Do you know in heaven, the only people who are going to get there are disciples of Jesus Christ? There's no one getting to heaven by just being a believer in Jesus Christ. Only disciples of Jesus Christ go to heaven. And that means that you could believe in God and not follow him and just believing in God is just not enough. There has to be a day that I'm saying, you know what, I'm surrendering my life to you, God. And you surrender at the level you're at. Surrender wherever you're at. You don't fix your life and come to Jesus. You're just willing to follow. He's the mentor. He's the teacher. He's the coach. You come, out of, you come to Jesus out of shape, and he's your coach. It gets you into shape. You understand how it works? You don't get into shape and get your mentor. You just come the way you are. And he's the one that puts your relationships back in order. Your thinking back in order, your emotions back in order, your family back in order. Just follow him. And if you follow him, this is what you, at the end, there's such a great blessing. We have eternal life forever and ever and ever. A place with no pain, no suffering, no death. People ask me, if there's a God, why there's so much suffering in the world? Because this is not heaven. And we got a whole bunch of imperfect people hurting each other. So why doesn't God just end it right now then? Because if he ended it right now, maybe you wouldn't be saved. So he's just waiting for you to give your life to the Lord. And there's going to be a final day when there's going to be a final person that gives their life to Jesus and Jesus is coming back at that time. I don't know when he's coming, but he's coming back. And I pray that you're ready. I pray that you live an amazing life now, but you're ready for eternity. So I'm going to ask you just a simple question. If, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? You say, you know what? I don't know. I, I, but I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want the creator of the universe, the most influential person to ever live to earth, the one that resurrected from the dead, the one that said I'm the way, the truth, and the life, the one that's willing to forgive me and accept me like no one else would do and love me unconditionally. I want to serve him. And I want to get his heart. I want to get his wisdom. 
And I want to start living the abundant life that he offers me. I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to fully leave everything to follow Jesus today. This is the greatest decision you'll ever make. And if you give your life to Jesus, you're going to give your life to purpose and you will have eternal life. You'll be forgiven of every single sin you've ever done. You don't have to live in guilt and shame and living in the past. We've all messed up. There's nobody here that has it all together. We've all messed up. We all need Jesus to help us, save us, and make us whole. I'm going to count to three. They say, Pastor, that's me. I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want God to restore my life. I want to be forgiven. I want a new start. Today's my day. One, when I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over the building. Two, and don't hesitate. Because remember, today's the day to take action. And the longer you take to take action, the harder it will be to make the right decision. Don't try to figure it out. God's the coach. He's going to help you figure it out. He's the mentor. He's going to help you overcome. Today's your day to surrender all. When I say three, raise your hands all this building. One, two, three. Raise your hands all this building. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand over there. Anybody else? I see those hands over here. Many are called. Come on. Many are called. Many are called. Anybody else? I want those to raise their hands. I want you to do one more big step. I want you to leave your seat and give me the honor and the privilege to pray with you. This is what you're doing. You're taking your first step in following Jesus. You're leaving your nets. You're leaving your pride. You're leaving your past in those seats, and you're coming to follow Jesus. So if you raise your hands, I want to follow Jesus. I want you to just you raise your hands. I want you to come up real quick, and we're going to pray with you. And as they're coming up, let's give them a hand. As they're coming up. As you're, even way in the back, ask your neighbor, you want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. I'm ready to serve Jesus. I'm ready to be a disciple. I'm ready to surrender all. Come on, they're coming. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on. Someone's making a decision like they did. Back in the day, Matthew left everything. Philip left everything. Andrew left everything. James left everything to follow Jesus. Come on, someone's marriage is going to be restored. Someone's going to set a new pattern in their family today. This decision is going to save your kids. This decision is going to start a new, new life, a life of freedom, a new legacy. Come on, God is touching people today. Come on, they're going to have a new life today. They're going to be forgiven today. They're starting over today. God's going to help. Love you. Awesome. Come on, let's never get tired. People are making a decision. He's ready. There he goes. He's coming as a little young man right there. I'm following Jesus. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It takes a real man and woman to do this. All right. They're still coming, so we're going to do one more shot. I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. We're going to dismiss in just a second, but proud of you. God's going to give us the power to do it. God's going to give us the power to do it. Love you. We can do this with God's power. You could overcome the drugs with God's power. You could be set free from any addiction through God's power. God can heal your broken heart right now. You could overcome. You say, man, I'm so undisciplined. Don't you worry about that. God's spirit's going to come in you, and he's going to give you the power to live for him. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a big hand. we got a lot of people saying, I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's pray together. We're one prayer away from surrendering our hearts to God. This is like a marriage. I just did a wedding the other day, yesterday, I think. I did a wedding and a Friday. And they say vows before God. God not only see, hears the vows, he's going to help them fulfill the vows. This vow that you're making to follow Jesus, God hears it. And he's been waiting for you to call upon him. He's tired. It hurts them to see you do life alone and the pain you're going through. No longer do you need to live this life. Today's your day to surrender. I'm following Jesus. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you love me. You died on the cross to pay the price 
for all the wrong I've done. I no longer need to live in shame, in guilt, pain, and addiction. Today, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I turn my back on everything that stops me from following you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I am now a disciple of Jesus Christ. I have eternal life. I am born again. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit, with your peace, with your joy, with your strength. I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for calling me. I am now saved. I have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Everyone that came up here, we love you. Everyone that came today, you are disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's continue coming to the house of God, learning, growing. And if someone asks you, what would you learn? Be quick to tell them out there. Someone needs to hear it. And if you came for the first time, we love you. And I hope that you just make it a habit. And I believe every time you come, you're going to grow just a little bit more. You're a disciple of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you. Have a great, great afternoon. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray with you up here. We got a team that's been dedicated to praying for you. Love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Everyone online, so thank you for, sh for tuning in. And we believe God's presence is right there in that room. If you need prayer in your home right now, pray. The presence of God is there for your breakthrough. God bless you. We love you. Go out there, be a disciple, and make some disciples in Jesus' name. Love you. Bye-bye.